everybody. Today I'm very excited. We're going to be doing an um, unboxing for this portion of the video. Um, then we'll cut to another portion where we do some, uh, you know, real life examples of using this. Alright, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on the unboxing itself. I'm going to show real quick what it comes with. If I can ever open it. Break the light before I even do the video. Oh, it comes with a sticker, so this is already, uh, a win-win for me here. Alright, that's everything. Let's get the box out of the way. So, we have the home charger, AC, micro USB, same as the old one. It even has the little groove. The little groove that feeds into the uh, charger. Then we have the DC car charger. This is the bigger kit, um, the more expensive kit that comes with everything. Uh, I did purchase this myself, so no sponsoring, so this is going to be, um, you know, a straight up review. Quality control sticker on there. Alright, streamlined strong. Talks about some other stuff. A lanyard sticker. Streamlight strong. Some mounting bolts. And of course, a manual. Alright, so let's get a look at what you guys all want to see. Alright, guys. So now that we got everything out of the box. I figured I would do a close-up of uh, all the features starting at the top of the light. You can see we have still the same design with a single LED. Lots of reflective uh, materials, I guess you could say. And I, what I do notice is compared to my Stryon, and I'm pretty sure even the old Stinger, this dish in here to protect the glass inside is a lot deeper. Um, you have some of this... You know, extra milling, I'm not sure why, around that outside edge right here. Uh, beyond that, so that's all silver. Um, metal as well. Beyond that, we have these this for knurling for a grip in the front. We have the hot warning. We have the new switch on this, so we can choose whether we want to be in low, medium, or high. Um, while the light is on, obviously you can still cycle through these. I don't know if you can tell, but it's getting brighter. You can think you can kind of see it on my shirt there. Low, medium, high. For me, I always ran my Stryon in low, so it was kind of annoying to always start in high. I have to hold it to get the lower sections and get to the uh, lower powers. The button... I feel it is um, like easier to find on the light, but harder to press by accident. As in, if it's in your pants or maybe you slide it into your pocket, um, a lot of the techs in my shop will have the lights on and they wouldn't even know because it's in their back pocket and the pant is pressing down on it or even clicks the button completely. So I feel like if you're on this flashlight, you find the button easily because it's really the only rubber thing on here. But if you press it, it's actually not illuminating. You have to really, you know, use the tip of your thumb to turn the flashlight on, which I kind of like. I mean, I, I didn't run into that issue because my Stryon, whoops, my Stryon was a uh, rear only. I don't have the button up here, which I think is what causes that issue pretty frequently. So for me, it wasn't an issue, but I think that, that'll help a lot of people who might have had that issue in the past with the older Stinger. The typical charging port, the two little silver tabs or silver uh, screws 
and then the black triangle there. The same drop that you would find on the stinger, but then you see it picks back up for this uh, knurling and this little added uh, side piece for grip. So there's one on each side. This grip appears to be pretty abrasive, but it's actually like a plastic feel, so it's still slick in a sense. So it's not like, um, you know, super uh, abrasive like a sandpaper would be, although it does appear to be that way. Definitely comfortable in the hand. I wouldn't really hold my light like this, personally. I would probably do this style, where I'm holding it from the front. So you get this edge here, where the, the webbing of your thumb or palm, I guess, would sit in. So I kind of like that. This is more ergonomic in this sense, and for people, I think, who held it like this, this is probably going to be better for them. So we have the Streamlight logo, Streamlight Stinger 2020, the serial number, patents pending. Um, I think I mentioned before the knurling on the top, the grip on each side, and then knurling on the bottom. And then we come to the butt cap here, the battery uh, cover. So we have the second button. You can see there's a little bit of milling here. There's a little bit of like a concaved edge. That's going to be on both sides, I guess, to help you, you know, find the button there. Uh, this one is more sensitive, unlike uh, where I said the other is easier to not press by accident or harder to press. This one definitely has some more touch to it. So if you just want to temporarily put the light on, I think it's useful for that. And then we have the hatch, which is probably the weirdest thing on here, aside just from the, the aesthetic change of this design, which I think is good, whereas this hatch I'm not really the biggest fan of. This tab here is what you pull up or out against, and then the battery hatch will open, and the battery just slides out. You can only really put it in the right way. It can go in either way, with this tap up, but if you put it the other way, it'll get lodged. So you can really only put it in the correct way, which is nice. Whereas you could definitely put in the old batteries in, at least for my Stryon you could. And it just snaps shut. This is a IPX7 rating. I'm not sure if the Stryon is the same or not. And then in the next portion of this video, we'll go over specs a little better. So with this, you basically need a separate charging brick to charge these individual batteries or you utilize their USB so that they sell. And I honestly thought this kit would come with the um, Y cable so that you can charge multiple batteries at once because there's two basically per a battery assembly to run this light. Um, I have heard that you can run you know, other 2600 size batteries. I guess 2600 milliamps, the size is 18650. So there's that. Um, the place I got these from said that this assembly, the, the, the batteries are for, like for sale, they're available, but this assembly isn't, wasn't quite available yet. Um, they obviously have them on order because of how popular of a flashlight it probably will be. So first, I will use my Stryon. I don't know how well this will show up on the camera. It's officially in low. I'll bring it next to the camera. You can see we light up the power steering pump now. If we get closer, kind of dive in. I don't think my focus is that great. There we go. A little bit of a leak. If I point the light right on it, it kind of washes it out. The camera will adjust, but to my eyesight, it's a little washed out. So I would personally, I would probably point it like this, a little lower, and then I can see the actual, you know, the dirt and the grime right there. But let's say I'm looking for a coolant leak, so obviously I'm going to inspect the radiator. Say I'm looking along the uh, engine bay here, you can see if I point the light on the silver radiator, it's going to wash out the camera. And if I were to do it with my eyes, I'm looking here, everything's fine. As soon as I hit here, over the Mishimoto, where you can't read it anymore, it actually is like messing with my eyes and I would want to close my eyes or look away and then obviously you're not going to be able to see that well. Put the stry on off to the side, bust out the stinger in low mode. Your eyes aren't getting shocked from that 
initial drop from you know 600 lumens down to 300 down to 200 or whatever it is and if I cross over something really shiny or reflective like the Mishimoto logo it's not really impacting my eyes very much like I can easily look at it I'm not wanting to look away or, or you know wince a little bit um, which I think for other techs you know they would agree I know a lot of my my coworkers will use their, their stingers on high um, but it's I don't know I just feel like it's way too bright especially if your car is white or you have any kind of chrome or you have you know a reflective silver like this like this Mishimoto but you can see the camera is not the best but I'm telling you guys like the 100 lumens is cutting it we'll take a look at the end I had that power steering pump you can see the grime building up even if I go right with this with the main beam you can see it's still fine in the camera I can still see perfectly well like with my eyesight as well the camera's doing a decent job of uh, representing whether I use like the outside of the beam as opposed to the main part there it kind of washed out but to me it looks way better in person so I think honestly see if I can just show you guys different details around the bay you can see my dirty engine you can see it staying there you kind of look down in there see without the light it's just nothing and this is the low mode, guys. So I'm definitely impressed because I thought 100 lumens was going to be way too little. Check out the belt. You can see the grooves there. It's definitely looking all the way down at the exhaust. I don't know how good my focus is there, but it's lighting up. It's doing, looking down at the connector. Yeah, the focus isn't great put back a little bit I don't know how well it'll show so that's that's low that's medium it seems a lot brighter on the camera before it adjusts and that's high and like you probably noticed right there there wasn't much of a difference between medium and high I'm thinking it must be the beam difference so that'll probably come into the third part of this video where we look outside between low and medium is pretty substantial uh, Probably not as substantial as the camera's making it seem, but you can see that was high. That's medium. High. Medium. I think the camera's even exaggerating the difference between those two. I think it's less in person. I think the beam gets a little bit wider and brighter, and that's about it. But the night test, I think, will show the 2000 lumens more efficiently. But yeah, <laughs> if I cross the Mishimoto radiator with on medium or high it's it's bright just like the other one is so let's see how it goes this week all right so we're going to be testing out the uh stryon at first this is the stryon on high that wall is about uh 40 yards back i'm just going to zoom in on the camera so you can see the beam on the wall so like i said stryon high this should be stryon medium or no, I'm sorry, this is just try on high again, down to medium, down to low. Medium and back to high. Alright, we're gonna be switching to the stinger. That is a stinger at only low hundred lumens. I switched all the way to high by accident, so that's full force right there. That is medium. We lost some brightness for sure, so it was a little more noticeable than indoors. That's low. And off. Let's see what we do. This should be medium, from off position to medium. You can see where the beam is focused, and then off, and this should be high. Yeah, that's high. You can see the beam's a lot wider. Probably goes a little bit further. If you drop this thing, you know, the paint's going to start to wear away. If you've had a, a black stinger before, I'm sure you're aware of that. Um, I don't think the finish is going to be much different. So let's see. I'll zoom in. 
Sorry, I prefer manual focus. So we took a spill on the front one time. Let's see. Right there. See that one? The spill on that little metal bezel. Um, that's how like my Stryon would ding. You just see the ding. It's not really like an obvious scratch because the black coating or whatever color you got is gone. So, I mean, obviously I can live with that. Um, the quality on these things are just phenomenal, the durability and the build strength. So coming around this corner, we have a little bit of the black wearing off, just a tiny bit. You can barely see it. There's one that's a little worse than that. Uh, I don't really have too many spills this week. Sometimes I'll rest the light in a weird spot in the engine bay or in the bottom of the, uh, the tiny one right there. In the bottom of the engine bay. I'm sorry. In the engine bay or the bottom of a tire. So uh, sometimes, you know, you move an axle or you move uh, the drive line and you forget that your light's sitting in there and it takes a tumble. Nothing in the middle. All, most of your damage is going to be on the edges. Um, let's check out the bottom. I don't think I got much. That's, I think that was there. I don't think I did that. You can see a little bit along these edges where it got just a little chewed up, nothing crazy. So durability, you know, I would definitely give it nine out of 10. Um, I don't know how this plastic is gonna hold up if you were to somehow maybe drop it on a bench and catch, you know, a corner against that. Um, so maybe I'll take like, you know, the one point off for that. Um, and obviously didn't get any drops on the glass. So I don't know how the hell. Really the advantages are the switch. I think the ergonomics are probably better from the Stinger. Um, supposedly, you know, the high of 2000 but I don't I don't really buy that and then the, the much better battery life in low it's gonna be substantial even compared to the stinger and then it's just like leaps better over the Shryon in the low settings durability still great the customer service is still gonna be great their uh, lifetime warranty is still gonna be great so I would say it's a definite go um, in the description, if you want like more technical specs and a little bit more detailed um, for each little section that um, I thought that each little different criteria, you can check that out. I just don't want to make this too long-winded. But uh, some people did have issues putting this thing in its case. If you are familiar with like this style layout, I don't feel like it's that hard. You know, to slide in this little bracket's new. They didn't have that before. This little edge here. Line focus. There we go. This little edge is new, um, so it's it's a little different. And then when you take it, you just pull it off. So I don't know. See, it was a little weird there. Kind of caught that bottom one, but I'm holding it in my hand, and this edge is kind of sharp. You can still see like this whole week I've been kind of breaking in this thing, and I just get these marks from this plastic breaking down. I don't remember that happening with my Stryon, but again, it's not black, so maybe I just didn't notice because the contrast. That goes in maybe harder than my Stryon, but it comes out the same. It just comes forward. Putting it in might be like 15% harder. But that's it, guys. Definitely give this a thumbs up. If you enjoyed the video or, you know, I answered a question that you were uh, on the fence about, please uh, help, help me out doesn't cost you guys much but it really uh, helps build this channel up so if you enjoyed it please subscribe if i uh, answered a question please give it a like and if you have any more questions definitely leave a comment and uh yeah if you want to know a little bit more you can always check out the description i'll be putting uh more criteria in that all right thanks guys